God says, I am coming to live among you. There are specific times, specific seasons that God chooses to manifest himself in a unique way for a specific purpose. And it's those times that we call divine visitation. And when God, when those times arrive, that God is either bringing his people to himself, God is either changing somebody's story or fulfilling a divine agenda, a divine program, or God is making an intervention in the lives of his people, or sometimes God is making an intervention in the life of a nation. Those are specific times that God chooses to manifest his power, to manifest himself in a unique way for a reason. Every divine visitation culminates in supernatural manifestations. So when God visits a person, oh, miracles result. When God visits a nation, a people, I'm telling you, revival breaks forth. When God visits your home, you will see that things begin to take shape in your home. So listen, God giving you a job is nothing. God making sure that you have a family is nothing. God giving you children is nothing. There is a bigger thing that God wants to do. God is checking in in your home. God is checking in in your marriage. God is checking in where your job is concerned. God is checking in. 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 May the Lord visit you and may the Lord turn things around for your good. It's your year of divine visitation. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. You're welcome, everyone. Can we rise up for a time of prayer? I'll read Psalm 150, uh, verse 1 to 6. Psalm 150, verse 1 to 6 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and and dance praise him with stringed instruments and flutes praise him with loud symbols praise him with clashing symbols let everything that has breath praise the lord amen so the psalmist is encouraging us just to praise God because God is worthy of our praise. We are all here today because of the grace of God. So lift up your voice and just give thanks to God for a new day, for, for this service, for everything that he has done. Amen. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, oh God. We adore you for your goodness. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy to receive the honor and the adoration that is due you we thank you we magnify you it's just by your grace that we are here today we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we lift our voice to you almighty god we thank you for today thank you for our lives thank you for each and every one of us thank you for your salvation thank you for the service thank you for what you are going to do to, uh, today thank you almighty god for everything we adore you we magnify you you are worthy of our praise you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to receive all the glory all the honor keep praying keep praying and lift up your voice maya shandiria kataya maya kandiria kataya thank you almighty god you are the king of kings and the lord of lords you are the alpha and the omega we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and adoration maya shandiria kataya maya kindiria kataya thank you king of kings thank you lord of lords oh be magnified our king be magnified you are the king of kings and the lord of lords we lift your name up on high today lord receive the praise receive the glory take preeminence in our service today take over the service in the name of jesus take over lord you are the center of our focus today you are the center it's all about you today it's not about any of us oh god but all about you so be glorified be lifted up high oh god we worship you we magnify you in the mighty 
name of Jesus. Maya Shandaria Kataya, Maya Kinderia Kataya, Maya Shandoria Kataya. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Take over this service in the name of Jesus. Maya Shandaria Kataya, Maya Kinderia Kataya. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Next, we're going to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to take control. We want to pray that today the Holy Spirit will just fill the service, will take over. The Holy Spirit, he's, the, he's like the CEO of everything. If everything will go well, it's up to the Holy Spirit. So we want to invite the Holy Spirit to take over the service, to take over the first, the second, every service that we are going to have. He should take over and empower us, fill us, and fall afresh upon us today. Let's lift our voice and pray. Father, we give you praise. Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place today. We ask that we invite you to take over. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over. Move in this place, O oh God. It's all about you, O oh God. Move in this place. Fall afresh upon us, O oh God. We want a good experience with you, O oh God. Fall afresh, Holy Spirit. Empower us, O oh God. Anoint us, O oh God. Maya Shandiria Kataya. We bring the choir before thee, O oh God, that you fill them up, O oh God. We bring every aspect of the service under your care, Holy Spirit, that you will take control in the name of Jesus we give you praise Holy Spirit we magnify you we say take over in the mighty name of Jesus we give you praise we give you glory in Jesus name we pray amen amen put your hands together for the Lord hallelujah good morning church Shadow, stay part of the grave. Break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Say, running, running to wild open spaces. Praise them, waiting for you. Waiting for you. Hey. That's like the way it has been lifted. Praise them, praise them.
like the way I believed ah. Grace is waiting for come on, come on. me Just like the way has been lifted Grace is
worship. Amen. If this is your first time worshiping with us on a Sunday like this, your first time at Christ Center on a Sunday morning, could you please indicate by just giving us a wave? Hello, good morning, welcome. You are welcome. The host team are going to give you a welcome pack. Feel free to flick through, but you are our special guest this morning. You are our VIPs, and we pray that your life will be transformed by the Holy Spirit as you worship with us this morning. Amen. Who's excited to be in church this morning? Yes. You know that first song that we sang? Um, it reminded me of the scripture in Matthew 18, verse 20, where Jesus said, where three or two or more are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Amen. And as we are here gathered in the name of Jesus here at Christ Center, we can be sure that the Holy Spirit is here dwelling with us. So just like we sang in that first song, where his spirit is, there is freedom. Where his spirit is, there is joy. Where his spirit is, there is breakthrough, there is healing. So I don't know. I don't know how your week has gone or how your morning has gone, but be assured that as you're here in Christ Center, as the Holy Spirit is dwelling with us here right now, anything you need, it's in this place. Amen? Amen. Now, please watch the screen for um, the announcements this week, after which the music team will be back to bless us with a special song. Enjoy the service. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Covenant Church. We are so glad you have chosen to fellowship with us today. Please stay tuned for this week's announcements. Our weekly services continue right here at Christ Centre with our Wednesday teaching services from 7pm and Friday prayer services from 6.30pm. Your life will be transformed as you receive all that the Lord has in store for you. We continue to meet daily to pray in four prayer watches. Our prayer chain continues. The first watch is from 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. on prayer line, with Mondays and Saturdays being on Zoom. The second watch is from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on prayer line. Third watch is from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. right here at Christ Center. And the fourth watch is from 11 p.m. to 11.45 p.m. on prayer line. May the Lord bless you as you engage in the prayers. Our next membership class will be taking place next week, Saturday, the 20th of April from 10 a.m. right here at Christ Center. What an awesome opportunity it is to become a part of this incredible family of God. If you would like more information or to register your interest, then please do speak to any member of the host team today. Alternatively, you can register your interest online at covenantchurch.org.uk. Do you belong to a Vine Fellowship? Vine fellowships are like church within the home where you have the opportunity to meet with other believers within your neighborhood. You get to share the word together, pray together and encourage one another. We meet every other Tuesday across various locations within the Southampton, Chandlersford, Hedgend and Winchester areas. Please speak to any member of the host team for more information about your nearest Vine fellowship. The works at Christ Centre continue. God has given us this beautiful home and we are looking for continued donation efforts to complete the renovation works. God bless you as you give to his house. Thank you for listening to these announcements. We hope that you are blessed by the remainder of the service. Get to hide. I was a blind man wandering until I saw the light. I got a story I can't deny. See, I'm a living, breathing miracle, and I just gotta testify. You wanna tell them?
to bring the news that everything he did for me, I know he'd do for you. He gave me joy for the morning, yeah, and for the ashes of crown. See, I'm a walking, talking miracle, and I just got Your neighbor high five tell your neighbor say neighbor nobody can bless you like Jesus uh, uh, tell the next person he's the one that saved you uh, he's the one that provides for you he's the one that blesses you he's the one that extends his grace towards you nobody can be compared to our Jesus give him praise once again I appreciate it glory be to God what a mighty God we serve what a blessing what a mighty God we serve and it's a joy to come before his presence this morning and just worship him, bless his holy name and adore him. Is somebody truly excited to be in the house of the Lord? 
Uh, I don't know how your week has been, but I'm telling you, I'm so excited to always come into the... The Bible says that in this presence, there is fullness of joy. And there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. I appreciate him once again. Bless his holy name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we come to church and we say, clap your hands, it is scriptural. When we say shout, it is scriptural. You know, the walls of Jericho didn't fall down necessarily through prayer. It was a shout. Look at somebody tell them it was a shout. I, I don't know what walls you want to fall down this morning. But if somebody can give the Lord a mighty shout, some walls will come falling down. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. And I know that sometimes our personalities, you know, sometimes, you know, says that we are a bit diplomatic. We like to be a bit calm. We like to be cool. But in the presence of the Lord, you have to just let loose. Amen. Uh, look at somebody, tell them, I'm in my father's house. How I many of you know that you feel free when you're in your father's house? When you, when you visit somebody and you're in a stranger's house... word for us. A word that you prepared even before the foundations of the world that it will bless our lives, impart our lives and change us and transform us. Father, may your word come forth with power. I thank you that you've anointed me to teach your word with power this morning as it less of me, more of you. None of me, but all of you. Let revelation knowledge flow freely. Let no one under the sound of my voice remain the same. Divine Holy Spirit, take complete control of all that I shall share with your people this morning. Uh, thank you for all that you are doing. Bless someone today. Inspire someone today. Encourage someone today. Build someone up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Unto you be the glory unto you be the honor in jesus mighty name i pray amen, amen. hallelujah well we give god praise amen and uh, last week uh, i talked about uh, receiving our inheritance in christ jesus receiving our inheritance in christ jesus and uh, um, as uh, through over through the week i was mulling over that message and uh, i went back and i i watched that message again and listened to it again and sometimes it's good to go back and listen to what you've preached and watch it again and uh, and uh, as i as i watched it and listened to it again i just felt strongly to continue in the same vein uh, just just add some things that the lord laid on my heart to share with you and so this morning i'm speaking on what i've titled walking in our inheritance in christ 
Last week I talked about receiving an inherit, our inheritance, but I want to talk this morning on walking in our inheritance in Christ Jesus, because our inheritance is in the is in Christ Jesus, is in the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we need to know how to walk in that inheritance. And uh, I want you to open up your heart. And I believe God will richly bless you this morning uh, as you tune in to his word. Uh, we'll start in John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30, we are made to understand the very, we find in John 19, verse 30, the very last words of Jesus when he hanged on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Uh, like, can we all just read it together? One, two, three. Go with me. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus said, it is finished. It, now that statement is a short statement, but it's heavily loaded. It is is finished when jesus said it is finished on the cross he was saying that he had successfully paid for everything that we will ever need Amen. he had successfully paid for everything that we will ever need jesus paid it in full so I want you to understand that everything that you need in life and everything that you will ever need in the weeks to come, days to come, years to come, uh, everything that you will ever need, Jesus has already paid for it. It is fully paid for. Uh, say to yourself, it's fully paid for. It, Jesus paid it on the cross of Calvary. So everything that you will ever need in life has already been paid for. Isn't it awesome that if, um, I don't know how you feel when uh, if somebody comes to you and maybe they ask you, just go to a shop and just pick anything you want. Anything you pick is already paid for. I don't know how many of you will select some things. You know, maybe when you go with your own money, there are some things you will never choose. But when somebody is sponsoring, how many of you know that you will go for the best of the best? I mean, the things that normally you will not even go for. Because it is not your money. <laughs> and it's already been paid for. Fully paid. I'm telling you, go and grab all the things that you need. Even the things, if you are not careful, the things you don't even need, you'll go for them. It, it just in case that this doesn't happen again. And people will say, opportunity comes but once. So if this opportunity has arisen, then I might as well take, <laughs> make good use of that opportunity. So you go and receive and take all that, that you really need and all that you want. Jesus also paid for everything. It's a beautiful thing to understand that when he hung on the cross and said it is finished, he, he fully paid for all that we we'll ever need in this life. So, so the finished works of Christ includes our salvation. The finished works of Christ, all that he paid for includes our salvation. It includes our deliverance. It includes our prosperity, our progress in life. It includes our healing. It includes our peace. It includes, uh, you know, having a good marriage. Every good thing that you can think about or that you can, you've seen in the scriptures, Jesus paid for it. It is already Paid for, fully paid for. Now let's go to Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible confirms what I'm trying to say. The Bible says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Uh, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. It says again, as his divine power. Now his divine power is his grace. As his divine power has given to us all things. So it would be all things. Not some things. Not a few things. Not just a fraction of some things. The Bible says his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So, this is one of the fundamental truths that every believer needs to be aware of. That all that you need in life and all that you will ever need has already been made available. Already been made available. So, it's already available. 
Oh, he said, the Bible says his divine power has given, not will give, has given. So, before you were even born, it was already there. His divine power has given, past tense, all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, everything that you will ever need has already been made available by Christ. And guess what? It's already available in its entirety. Guess where it is? In your spirit. It's already available in its entirety. Everything is available. So think about the things you need in life. Just, just, just think about it. Just take a few seconds to think about some of the things you need in life. Right now, as you sit in church this morning, think about some of the things you need. You know, everything that you've thought about, even now, I'm sure some of you are, believe you are, you are thinking, man, my job. You know, I need some money. I need some cash. I need, you know, I need, I need, I need to, I need to marry. I need to do this. I need to, I need a new job. I need a new business. I need to, everything, or some of you are thinking, I need healing right now. I need deliverance. I need, I need need God to sort out somebody. You know, everything you can think about is already available. It's already available. Jesus, how many of you know, Jesus is not now going to die. He died before you were born. You know, it's not, it's not now that you are an adult that Jesus is going to die. He's already died. You know, so he has already made it available even before you came on the surface of the earth. Everything that you will ever need was made available. It's a beautiful thing. And it's already present in its entirety in your spirit. And so the Bible tells us also in John chapter 1, I want you to follow me closely. John chapter 1, verse 6. Look at what the Bible says in John, verse 16. John chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, And of his fullness we have all received. And grace for grace. And of his fullness. Not of his emptiness, but of his fullness. Jesus is full. Of every good thing that we need. And the Bible says, and of his fullness, each one of us have all, we've all received. We've received of his fullness. So whatever Jesus is full of, we've received it. The day you said yes to Jesus, the day you gave your life to Christ, the day you became born again, you received the fullness of Christ. Everything that is in him, you've received it that day. You gave your life to Christ. It's a beautiful thing. Now, I just want you to see a few things here. So let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 is a scripture that is uh, quite interesting. The Bible says this. Now, hope does not disappoint. Now, hope does not disappoint. I pray that your hopes will not be disappointed. How many of you have hopes right now? As you say that you, I mean, every one of us, even me, I have, I have tons of hopes. I'm hoping for some wild things. Oh, look at somebody. Wild things. Everybody needs to have some hopes. You know, Uh, uh, the Bible says that now hope does not disappoint. Why doesn't hope disappoint? The Bible then gives us the answer. Why, if you have a hope, that hope will not be disappointed. The reason why your hope will not disappoint or will not be disappointed is because, the Bible says, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, that's quite an interesting scripture. Now, hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The day we gave our lives to Christ, Jesus came into our hearts in the person of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came into our hearts, he poured out the love of God into our hearts. That's what the Bible says. He, he came into our heart and when he came, he came to like with a bucket load of God's love and poured it. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, but we first need to understand, the Bible says the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. What is our heart? What is the heart? We need to, we need to explain that. The heart of a man is the center 
of his life. The heart of a person is the center of his life. In the scriptures, when you come across the heart, the heart refers to your spirit man. Or other, you know, in other, other uh, books of the Bible, uh, the, some of the epistles, it refers to it as the inner man or the inward man. So your heart is the inner man, your heart is the inward man, or your heart is your spirit man. You know, you have, you know, man is, man is tripartite. Man is first a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. Your heart is your spirit. That is why your heart, the real you is your spirit. That is why your heart is, is the center of a person. Because the real you is your spirit. And the Bible says the love of God has been, other translations, uh, 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 New King James, Old King James says, has been shed abroad in our hearts. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. So the love of God has been poured out in your own spirit. Your spirit man, your inner man, or your inward man is the same thing. The love of God has been poured out into it. Now that's quite interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. That means that when you hope for something, it's going to come to pass because of what has been poured out in your heart. So, if I'm hoping that God will change my circumstance and I have this great hope, that hope will come to pass because something is in your heart. Because the love of God is now inside of you. God has been poured out in your, into your heart. You are not going to be disappointed uh, for, you know, in what you are hoping for because of what has been poured out in your heart. Now, the Bible says the love of God has been poured out. Watch this carefully. The love of God has been poured out. The love of God. But I want you to understand that it's God that has been poured out in your heart. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, uh, it says in the, he who does not love does not know God. For God is, oh let, let's go again. He who does, not know, who does not love does not know God. For, for what? No, say it like you mean it. For God is love. So for God is love. So if the Bible says in Romans 5, 5 that the love of God has been poured out in your heart, I submit to you that it is God himself that has been poured out in your heart. Because the Bible says, 1 John 4, 8 says, for God is love. God doesn't have love. God will not have love. God is. God is love. And so if love has been poured in your heart, then God has been poured in your heart. So I submit to you, you are a God carrier. Oh, are you with me? So you have to be, as a Christian, you have to be God inside minded. You have to be God inside minded. You always have to, as you go through life, never forget that God is inside you. God is inside you. God is inside you. The love of God. God himself is inside you. His love has been poured out in your heart and God himself resides in you. God is love. So you have to become God inside minded. Hallelujah. Now, and we'll talk about that because that, that, that comes with renewal of the mind which we are coming to deal with. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1. We read this scripture last week. I'm just building up on something because, you know, I started by saying that when Jesus hung on the cross, he paid for everything. Everything that you'll ever need, Jesus paid for it. He said, it is finished. Your salvation, your deliverance, prosperity, your healing, your, you know, your peace of mind, your joy, everything Jesus paid for. And everything, the Bible says, we've also received his fullness. Of his fullness, we have all received. And the Bible says that now, God himself has been poured in our heart. So if he's in our heart, then everything that is in him is in us. Are, are you with me? Everything that is in him is in us because he's now in us. Is in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing uh, in the heavenly places in Christ. So, what have you been blessed with? 
uh, some of you are not, are not sure. Every spiritual blessing in heaven. What have you been blessed with? Every spiritual blessing in what? So your blessing is a spiritual blessing. Now it's important for you to understand that. But how many of you know that the blessing in the spirit does not benefit you? No, but because we need the thing. We need to experience it. Is that not so? I mean, if the blessing is in the spirit, then you need to, it, it must be manifested in your life. What is the point of something being there and you are aware it is there, but you can't, you can't take it, you can't touch it. You, you don't have delivery of it. I mean, it's, then it's, it's like, I mean, what is the benefit? The blessing is a spiritual blessing. And the Bible says, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. Now, and we said that last week we found out in Galatians chapter 2 that Christ is in us. And if Christ is in us and the blessings, the spiritual blessings, you know, are in Christ and Christ is in us, then we also, in us, is all spiritual blessings. And we said that the blessings of God are in our spirit. We, oh, are you with me? Now, I want you to understand that there, there's two realms that exist and they run concurrently two realms. The first realm is the physical realm or the physical world. And uh, the physical world is operating and running and there is also a spiritual realm or a spiritual world that is also operating and they run concurrently. Spiritual realm, physical realm. Oh, are you with me? They operate, they run concurrently. When the spiritual world materializes, it becomes the physical world. When the spiritual realm materializes, it becomes the physical realm or the physical world. So, the physical world is just a manifestation of the spiritual realm. The physical realm is just, a, is just the spiritual realm being manifested. Then it becomes physical. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Now, the spiritual realm... I want you to understand it's more real even than the physical. Yeah. The spiritual realm. The Bible says is something in 2 Corinthians chapter. Look at what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4:18. The Bible says this. It says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. So anything you see is physical. And the Bible says the things which we see, they are what? Temporary. But the things which are not seen, which are spiritual, the spiritual things which we cannot see, the Bible says they are eternal. I want you to understand that the spiritual realm is more real even than the physical. It's more real. And it is the spiritual realm that gives birth to the physical realm. When the spiritual realm manifests, it becomes the physical realm or the physical world. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so, there will be no existence of the physical if there wasn't an existence of the spiritual. Uh, are you with me? If the a spiritual did not exist, then the physical wouldn't exist also. Because it is the spiritual that gives birth to the physical. So, I want you to understand what God has done for you. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that God has blessed us with what? With every spiritual blessing where? In the heavenly places. So as our blessings are, is a spiritual blessing. It's in the spiritual realm. Oh, are you with me? So, and it's the spiritual realm that gives birth to the physical realm. So what God has done for us is like God has given us the root to the fruit. You can cut down a tree, but if there's still the roots are still in the, still in the ground, you know it's a matter of time. Yeah. At the scent of water, yeah. at the scent of water, it will grow again. Yeah. At the, it will grow again. So what God has done for us, God has given us the root to the fruit. The root is the spirit realm. The fruit is the physical realm. So he, so that's what God has done. But but the root must give birth to the fruit. The spirit realm, the blessings cannot remain in the spirit realm because we need it in the physical. 
I mean, what's the point of, you know, you, you need something here and then you don't have it until, and then you know it's around, but, but you, you, you don't have it. I mean, you don't, it's not manifested yet in your life. And, and you are wondering, you are going through life and you are struggling and, and, and life is tough because, because you are not receiving some things. You don't have certain things. And even though you know that they are there, you don't have it. So now the, 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 the issue is we need to transfer yeah. what is in the spirit yeah. into the physical. Oh, are you with me? There has to be some wire, wire transfer. Some online transference. Are you with me? We need to go to the, to the cash point. Have you ever been to the cash point with your bank card? Did you see the money when you went to the cash point? You didn't see the money. You just saw the, the cash machine. Isn't it? But you believe that the money is there. Did you not believe that the money was there? If you have the money in your bank account you know that with your cash point you can withdraw something. So you go to the bank till confidently. You don't go thinking will it work, will it not work, will it work, will it not work. No, no, no. You went, you, you stood in front of the cash point and you were confident because you know I have got millions in my bank account. And if anybody comes there and try to, you know, behave a certain way, you look at them funny because you don't know. I am loaded. I'm loaded. I have, I'm, I'm full. My bank account is full. And then when you bring out your bank card, you slot it in. Then you key in the code. Your PIN. And then you key in there. It will ask you, how much do you want? This is what we call withdrawal. You are withdrawing cash. Yeah. Then you, you key in the code and then you put in your amount. And then it says, okay. Then it started, you know, the machine starts working. Brrr, then, then you know something is happening. <laughs> it's a matter of time it will manifest. Then your card comes out first. And then the money, by the time you realize the money is being released. When you see the money, sometimes you see the notes, it's fresh notes. And you are so excited. You know what has happened? The spirit realm has just manifested into the physical. But you needed to go to the bank with your bank, to the cash point with your bank card. You needed to have your code. You needed everything. And you needed to believe that the money is there. That the bank uh, cash point is not faulty. Woe unto the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is why if you go to a, have you ever been to a cash point that is faulty you become very frustrated because you have money but you can't withdraw because it's out of order but thank God that there can never be an out of order for the blessings when it's time for us to withdraw them when it's time for you to withdraw healing you will get it it will never be said of you out of order. When it's time to receive deliverance, you'll receive deliverance. It will never be out of order. When anything you need is available. Because Jesus made it available. That is why Jesus, listen, almost as if Jesus, when he died on the cross and he finished the works, he transferred everything you need. All the, all, I'm using cash. But you, just, just for uh, you know, demonstration sake and for example sake, I'm using God. Almost like he transferred all the millions you will ever need in this, in this life. From the, time, from, from the time you gave your life to him until the time you die, he, everything you need, all the money has already been made available. So you just go there and just withdraw. But you have to believe he's there. Oh, are you with me? You have to believe is that most of the times the reason why we don't receive some things because we don't believe that is there. We don't believe that what has been made available and given to us is actually there and is real. But the spirit real is very real. So me, it's very real. It's very real. Now, in last week we said that God has given us all these spiritual blessings, and these blessings. Is in our spirit. But you can't see your spirit. Because it cannot be seen with the physical eyes. Nobody can see his spirit. Can you see my spirit? No, you can only see my body. But you can't see my spirit. Neither can I see your spirit. You can't see your own spirit. Because it cannot be peeped into with the physical eyes. But God has given us something 
that we can use to, to see what is in our spirit. That is why the word of God is a mirror that gives us a reflection of what's in our spirit. Just the same way as you stand in front of the mirror in the morning and then you, you check yourself. It gives you a reflection of what's on your body. And, and everything that you are wearing and all the, 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 the things, you, the powder you put on your face and the makeup and all the things, the mirror shows you in the same way the word of God is the mirror that God has given us that when you look into the word of God, it's a mirror, you begin to see what has been given to you which is already in, this, in, in your spirit. You want to see what you carry? Check the word. Oh, are you with me? You want to see what you are carrying? Take the mirror. Take the mirror of the word of God. You want to see what you are loaded with? You better check out in the mirror. That is why the Bible says that all kinds of precious promises are here. Oh, are you with me? Every, all the, the Bible says he has given us precious promises. And the precious promises are in his word. That is why the Bible is a book of promise. Promises are in his word. And all the promises are in our hearts. And so when we look into the word, it gives us a reflection. So anytime you read the Bible and you see the promises of God, God is showing you, the Bible is giving you a reflection of what you carry. So you know, man, by his stripes I'm healed. So I already carry healing. And then all you have to do is now learn to, how, learn to withdraw the healing when you need it. Oh, I carry deliverance. You learn to withdraw deliverance when you need it. I carry a new job. It's there. It's part of my blessing. The word of God shows you. How do I withdraw it? You learn how to withdraw what you need at every point in time. At every point in time. That is why I'm sharing with you what I'm sharing this morning. Amen? So when you look into the word of God, it's like a mirror showing you a reflection of what you already have in the spirit. It tells you, for example, that you are healed by his stripes. It tells you that you are above only and never beneath. It tells you that you are not abandoned. You are not left alone. It tells you that God loves you. That you belong to the Lord. Oh, are you with me? So the Christian life, the Christian life now is about you releasing what has already been given to you. And that is where the challenge is. Releasing what is already inside. It's in you. I'm telling you the truth. According to the word of the Lord, everything you need is in you. Oh, Pastor, I need a house. It's a spiritual blessing. It's the root. But it can produce the fruit. It's a spiritual blessing. I need a new job. I need a business. I need a, I need a career. I need someone to marry. I need children. It's there. You can, it, everything is there. Every blessing is there. According to 1 Peter chapter, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. It's all there. His divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. It's there. So the Christian life is not necessarily the process of learning to make God do something or whatever we want him to do. I want you to understand that our victory comes when we know how to withdraw those things that God has already done and that is inside of us. That is where our victory comes. Our victory comes from knowing how to withdraw. Just like you go to the, to the bank or you go to the cash machine to withdraw, you have to know how to. Somebody, you can give your card to uh, someone, a five-year-old, if they don't know how to key in the pin, there may be millions, but they won't know, they won't know how to withdraw it. If you give it to an illiterate, your card to an illiterate, they will think, what's this? you've given to me, they'll probably play with the card and probably throw it somewhere. They may think it's a useless thing that you've given to them. But you have to know how to withdraw what God has already given you. Now, so if we have all these things on the inside of us, sometimes we struggle to accept what we have. And we find it difficult and hard to really, you know, know how to withdraw those things. And the reason is because most times our minds are not renewed. And I want to just talk briefly about that. Our minds are not renewed. Now, man is first spirit. Man has a soul and lives in the body. 
Man is what? Spirit. Has a soul and lives in the body. The real you is your spirit. The real you is not your body. You may like your body. You may be happy with your body. You may treat your body nicely. Dress your body. You know, make it up. Do all the things. But the, the, your body is not the real you. Your body is just the house in which you live. The house in which the real you lives is your body. The real you is your spirit. But the Bible also says that we have a soul. The Bible talks about the spirit, soul, and body. When you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, the spirit, soul, and body. Paul says, may your spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit, soul, and body. So we also have a soul. We are, we are spirits. We have a soul. What is our soul? Our soul is our, our thinker, our feeler, and our what? Chooser. The soul is our thinker, feeler, chooser. Because the soul constitutes the mind, our intellect, and our emotions. When we talk about the soul, we are talking about our intellect, our mind, our emotions. So when you become very emotional, it's your soul at work. Oh, are you with me? Our soul is the thinker, is the feeler, and the chooser. You choose from your soul. You think with your mind, and your mind is part of your soul. So the soul, say with me, thinker, feeler, chooser. Hallelujah. Now, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, gives us something, shows us something. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If anyone is in Christ, anyone can be in Christ. And the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When we give our lives to Christ, we become new creation. But what is recreated, what becomes new, you know, where you're, you're, you are concerned as a human being, is not your body, neither is it your soul, it's your spirit that is recreated. Because when Adam sinned in the garden, God says that, God said to Adam, he says, the day that you eat of the fruit of the garden, you will surely die. But when Adam ate the fruit, he didn't physically die. He died spiritually. So everyone that is born is already spiritually dead because we all proceeded from Adam. Are you with me? But when we give our lives to Christ, our spirits that are dead to God now becomes regenerated, becomes recreated. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. What is the new creation? The new creation is your spirit that has been recreated anew. Oh, are you with me? In other words, all of a sudden, your spirit has become very much alive to God. You can now communicate to God. You can understand God. God can speak to you. He can come and live on the inside of you and communicate with you and, and show you things that you didn't know before. So, but when we gave our life to Christ, only our spirits became new and recreated. Your soul was the same. The body is the same. Have you noticed that the day you gave your life to Christ, the color of your skin didn't change? The size of your body didn't change. Everything the same. And have you noticed that, you know, your thinking didn't necessarily change the day you gave your life to Christ? What you were thinking before. Maybe you, you thought about some things, you know, just before you gave your life to Christ. After you said the, the, the prayer, the sinner's prayer, you went back to thinking the same things you were thinking before. Because your soul did not change. It's your spirit that changed. Oh, are you with me? So, if the soul didn't change, and the soul is your mind, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser, then something has to be done to the soul. Or are you with me? Because the soul is very critical. Because with the soul, we think. In our soul, we feel. And so, that is why if your soul is not in the right place, you can feel anything. Are you with me? And sometimes you can move in the direction of your feelings. And, and you know that sometimes your feelings are not really in the right place. Sometimes your thinking is not in the right place. Sometimes you choose and you choose wrongly. Are you with me? So something needs to be done to the soul. Something needs to be done to the soul. It's because only our spirits got born again. The mind 
remain the same. And now the mind has to be renewed. Why does the mind, why do we need to renew our mind? See, the mind is, is the first part of your soul. The mind. The mind must be renewed. And what do we renew our mind with? With the word of God. I will show you in a minute why all that is important in relation to what we have in our spirit. Look at, let's look at briefly Romans chapter 12 and uh, we'll read verse 2. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So every one of us can be transformed. But the Bible says that can only take place by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. So the degree to which you renew your mind is the degree to which you walk even in the will of God. Is the degree to which you even see the manifestations of the blessings of God in your life. The degree to which your mind is renewed. Because you renew your mind with the word of God. Now, but what does it mean to renew the mind? What does it mean to renew? The, renewing the mind, it's a process by which our thoughts, our beliefs, and opinions agree with the word of God. Or we align them, we align our thoughts our beliefs, our opinions, we align them with the word of God. We all grew up, you know, in environments and we all pick up things. There are things we think about. There are things that we, that some of them have become strongholds because these are opinions that we hold and all that. But when you give your life to Christ, your, your thoughts must line up with the word of God. So if you are thinking something and God's word says something different, you don't change God's word. You change what you think to accept what God is saying. Oh, are you with me? Because sometimes, sometimes people want to change God's word. You know, you are thinking something. You believe you are even more right than the word of God. But renewing the mind simply means, I'm thinking this way. This is what I believe. This is what I've been holding on to. But the word of God is saying something different. So, you, you don't change God's word. You rather change what you think and you align what you think with the word of God. When you keep doing that every single day where you align your thoughts with the word of God, align your thoughts with the word of God, align your thoughts with the word of God, that process is called renewing the mind. It's called renewing the mind. You renew your mind through that process. You allow the information from the word of God to move and register in your mind and to align itself with your thinking. Or you align your thinking rather with the word of God. So you cannot transform the way you think if you don't read the word of God. You can't transform the way you think. If this, Bible, if this Bible is alien to you, renewing your mind will be very difficult because you renew your mind with the word of God. So if you don't read the word, then there is no way you'll be able to transform your life because it is the word that helps you to renew your mind. You align, you read it. This is what the word says. This is what my mind tells me. But this is what the word says. I bring my mind in alignment with the word. I bring my mind in alignment. So if God says it, I believe it, it is settled. If God says it, I believe it, it is settled. And you keep doing it over and over and over and over again until you realize that now you think like God. You think like the word. In fact, you think the word. When you talk, the word is coming out. When you are feeling, you can tell that this feelings is, is scripturally based. It's a, it's a scriptural feeling. Oh, are you with me? So, to renew your mind, you have to make a habit of constantly allowing the word of God to rule your thinking. If you want to renew your mind, you have to make it a habit to constantly allow the word of God to rule your thinking. Not sometimes, but every time, all the time, constantly. 
you have to continue to say what the word says until you start believing what the word says. You have to constantly remind yourself of what God has said concerning you. Even though, you know, other things may be telling you something different or people may be telling you something different. You have to, you have to constantly remind yourself that this is what God says about me. The doctor may say something to you, but you have to remind yourself what the Lord says about you. The solicitor or, or may say something about you, but remind yourself of what the Lord says about you. Anything that anybody says, align it with the word. Don't just, don't just accept it. Bring your mind in alignment with the word of God. And it's a daily process. It's a daily thing you have to do. When you do that constantly, you are in the process of renewing your mind renewing your mind that is the process of renewing your mind your mind you, you i mean you get the word of god you renew your mind with the word of god and you bring your mind in alignment with what god's word says and when your mind is renewed you know what happens note this now when your mind is renewed your mind is now in alignment with the word of god you know what happened automatically you know what happened your mind begins to agree with your spirit. It's automatic. All of a sudden, you begin to agree with what is in you. What Jesus died and made available for you. You begin to, you begin to agree that truly is there. Truly is mine. Truly I can lay claim to it. Truly it belongs to me. Truly I have it. That is, what, that is why it's important to be, because when your mind is not renewed, there, is a, there are a lot of things that Jesus has deposited within you, but I'm telling you, your mind may never come into agreement with it. So you want to believe God, but your mind is telling you something different. You want to believe God, but your feelings are telling you something different. You want to believe God, but man, you are not even sure what to do. Because the mind is not yet renewed with the word of God. And so it is, not in, it is not in agreement yet with your spirit man. Because you see, your spirit man, when, the, when you got born again, your spirit became so holy that God could come and live in it. So holy. So as you see there now, a part of you is very holy. I thought you would say amen to that. One third of you is pure. You are, look at somebody telling you, you are a pure person. <laughs> if you are born again. One third of your spirit is so pure, so holy, that God chose to, uh, chose to come and live inside you. God decided I'll come in. So you carry God. You are pure. Oh, but, but how, come, how come sometimes I do some foolish things? Even though I carry God. It's because, it's because your mind is not yet renewed. Oh, are you with me? Your mind is still not. And you know, you know what? Let me show you something. When your mind is not renewed, you see, don't forget you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. The body is in contact with the world. The body wants to do what the world wants. When the world is saying something, the body loves the world. The body wants to, the body is the flesh. The flesh has its own, I mean, I like that, appetites. The flesh, the appetite. How many of you know the flesh has appetites? Think about how many times you want to eat that carrot cake. For starters. You know, sometimes you have some appetite for some things. Not just food, but you have appetites for some things that even sometimes may not be holy. And the reason why sometimes we yield to the appetites is because we've not yet renewed our mind. Because the soul is in between the spirit and the body. And there's, as for the soul, the soul can move. The more you renew your mind with the word of God, the soul moves towards the spirit. And in agreement. And then defeats the body. But if your mind is not renewed, there's no information of the word of God in you. In the mind. So it automatically shifts to the body. And all of a sudden, you are thinking in, in line with the body. You are, and then you, when you think in line with the body, you do things in line with the body. So renewing the mind is the most powerful thing a Christian can do. When you get born again, the next important thing to do as a Christian is to renew your mind with the word of God. That is why you must love the word of God. Hallelujah. Because when your mind is renewed, 
it will automatically agree with your spirit. And renewing the mind requires an investment of time. Oh, are you with me? When it's renewed, you start believing what's in your spirit. Then you just stand to now release. Because you agree with what is there. So it's a matter of releasing what is, what is there. Because now you are, you are a firm believer. It doesn't matter how you feel. If God says something and it's, it's different from what you feel, you believe God. Because your mind is renewed. Because now you are thinking in line with the word. You are not thinking in line with your, with your feelings, your body. You are thinking more in line with the word of God because your mind has been renewed with the word of God. Having to notice that when you receive an information, you know, uh, uh, that, is why, that is why information is, is powerful. Yeah. Have you noticed that when you receive certain kinds of information, your life moves in that direction? Yeah. Information is powerful. Yeah. When you receive information of the word of God, it will determine where you move and what happens in your life. It determines. So now you learn to release healing when you need it. You learn to release abundance when you need it because you believe you have abundance. You learn to release deliverance when you need it because you believe you have uh, deliverance. You learn to release you know, uh, anything that you want God to do and that you believe is on the inside of you, you just learn to release it because you have it. See, you must renew your mind to such an extent that this thing that I'm talking about is automatic. Something happens, you don't even think about what has happened, you think about what God says. Because your mind is renewed with the word, it's automatic. Your mind, quickly, you are thinking, this is what God says. I believe God over and above what is even happening around me. Oh, are you with me? Yeah. Have you? So, it, the renewal of the mind must, become, must be done in such a way that it's become automatic. It's, it's, your, it's, your, it's the first thing you do. The word. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever, have you noticed that when, when, when you start driving, when you start driving and uh, you just bought a car and you are driving to your house, maybe you, you came to city center and you are driving to your house, have you noticed that you are, you are very careful and you are watching the roads. For, or for example, if you are going to a place you've never been before, you are, you are, you are looking at the streets. It was the street. What street is this? In all those days when, we, when there was no uh, sat-navs, we used to do AA route planner. You know, sometimes or the A, A to Z. You know, it's on your lap. And you are looking, where am I going? You know, and you are looking. You are looking. You are looking. You are checking the roads. Am I on the right place? Have I, have I arrived? You know, you are checking. But how many of you really check the streets right now that you are a professional driver? When you are going home, how many of you really, how many of you really think about, oh, where am I now? Where am I now? How many of you think about it? Sometimes you can even be talking with somebody, you know, and uh, you, are, you are talking, you are not even checking what around you, but you realize you've arrived at your home. Yeah. Have, you, have you noticed that? You've, you've driven so many times that it's become something that is, you, it, subconsciously you just get to where you are going because it's something you are now used to you don't check hey where am I okay no my house is on the next street you don't get okay so no well, I'm here now I need to check okay I need to get to the next street no 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 when you leave city center sometimes I'm not even aware of what is happening around me by the time I realize I've arrived home because You've done it over and over to such an extent that it's become something it's become it's become normal Renewing of the mind must be done in such a way, such a way that when you are confronted with any issue, the, your first, your default is what God says. That's your default. That's your default. Because you've done it over and over and over and over again that you don't even consider your problem. You don't consider the situation. No, you don't deny it. You don't, listen, in life we don't deny reality. But we face reality with Jesus. We face reality with Jesus. So, you, you don't even think about, the first thing you think about is the law. The first thing you think about, what God says. That is the, that is the, the benefit of renewing the mind. If you think about what God says, then all you have to do is what I shared last week. You have to now, the Bible says in Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says that you have to what? 
you know, you have to uh, acknowledge. He said, Bible says that, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So all you have to do now to release what is on the inside of you, what is in your spirit, is to acknowledge it. What, did, what do we say to acknowledge? What does it mean? Three things we said to acknowledge. It means to recognize, to know something very well, and to accept it. So all of a sudden, you feel some pains in your body. But you know that because you've, renewed, you've read the word of God several times, your mind is renewed, that your mind is so aligned with the word of God, you know I already have healing on the inside of me. There is healing in my spirit. So your default is the healing in your spirit. So you just go to God and you begin to now acknowledge what you already have. You recognize it. You know it very well and you accept it. So your prayer even changes. Father, I thank you that I'm already blessed. Thank you that there's healing in me. I release it by faith in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that I have this job already because when Jesus died and said it is finished, it included the job I need. And Father, I thank you that this job is mine, is already in, the, in my spirit. I release it right now. I acknowledge it, Lord, and I thank you that it is mine. It is, it is coming. It is manifested. And then what is in the spirit manifests into the physical. So, and you do it repeatedly, constantly, constantly. That is how you walk in your inheritance. Because it is already there in you. But after you've renewed your mind, you have to now acknowledge that it is there. And in your prayer, you know, sometimes we pray that God will give us something. That, that is technically not, not completely right. Because what you are praying that God will give you has already given. Are you with me? It's already given. So, Father, I thank you that you've already given me this. Because when Jesus died, what I'm asking you now is included in what Jesus... It's, it's already mine. And, Father, I thank you. I release it in the name of Jesus. And that is why it's a walk of faith. Because you have to believe that even as you say it, it's happening. Are you with me? This is how we walk in our inheritance. So, the rest of your Christian life must be focused on renewing your mind. And after you've renewed your mind, you have to learn to release what is on the inside of you. So if the word of God says you are great, you accept you are great, you, you recognize you are great, and you know very well that you are great. If the word of God says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I recognize that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know it very well that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I accept that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in my prayer, Father, I thank you that indeed I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because might has been given to me. Jesus gave me might. Are you with me? And every day, that is why you need to know what the word says. When the word says it, recognize it. That's how you acknowledge. Recognize it. I know it very well and accept it. That is how we walk in our inheritance. Amen. You are loaded. Amen. Don't behave like Jesus didn't leave you anything. Don't talk like he never left you anything. Don't act like he never left you something. He left us. He died so that we can receive what he left us. Amen? Amen. But we need to know how to get it. And this is how we walk in it. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is that you are believing God for this morning is already in you. I don't know about you. Is there somebody that wants to acknowledge it this morning? Why don't you lift your voice and acknowledge? There's something in you. Or everything that you are believing God for. Jesus died. He said it is finished. It's already in you. So this morning, lift up your voice. Just for a minute, just pray and acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. It's already in you. Whatever it is, if you've located it in the scriptures, 
if you've located it in the word of God, then it is yours. Acknowledge it. Accept it. If it's a good marriage, it's already in you. Jesus died to give you a good marriage. If it is children, Jesus died to give you children. If it's a business, Jesus died. Everything we will ever need in this life, according to the scriptures, has already been made available to us. It is already present in its entirety in our spirit. This morning, acknowledge it. If it is healing, acknowledge it. It's already there. And release it this morning. Release it. And as you release it, you will see the manifestation in your physical body. Whatever it is you are believing God for, it is already there. It's on the inside of you. It is nowhere else. It's in you. Acknowledge it and release it in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O God. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name that we have all things that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you that you didn't leave us empty. You left us with an inheritance. We walk in our inheritance this morning. We renew our mind with the word of God. We pray, may the word fill our minds in the name of Jesus. For your word says that let the word of God dwell in us richly. We declare that from today, we study your word, we read your word, and the word dwells in us richly in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you that we will never lack any good thing. Because everything that we lack now, we already have it. We declare it is ours. We acknowledge it this morning. We receive it. We accept it. We declare it is there. And we release it into manifestation in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes briefly. If you are here this morning and you've not yet given your life to Christ, you've not accepted him as your Lord and your personal Savior, you are not yet born again. Uh, maybe you even go to church once in a while, you go to church, but you've never prayed to God, uh, to Jesus, that he will come and dwell in you, live in you. You've not accepted him yet as your personal Savior. I want to pray with you. If you are here like that, just raise your right hand and I will pray with you that Jesus will come into your heart, that Jesus will come into your life. He wants to save you. You see, you first have to have a relationship with him, then his promises will be real in your life if you are here like that i want to pray with you let me see your hand if your hand is up let me see it raise it higher so i can see it if i don't see it then we may just pray and 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 move on and close glory be to god father we thank you we give you glory we bless your holy name we honor you thank you for your people thank you that every inheritance belongs to them we receive the inheritance we walk in them lord we accept every promise we know them very well and we declare, we recognize them. And this morning we release healing. This morning we release deliverance. This morning we release rescue. This morning we release jobs. This morning we release good marriages. This morning we release children. This morning we release peace. We release joy. We release good homes. We release every good thing. Our businesses, jobs, careers, Lord. We release them this morning by the power of the living Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. We are grateful unto you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to give our tithes and our offerings anytime we come to church. The Bible encourages us to come not empty-handed but to give something. The Bible says on the first day of each week we should come into the house of God and, and give something. And the Bible says that we should set it aside. And what we give is based on how much God has helped us to earn according to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And so when we come before in the presence of God like this, we come to also give to him. You know, giving is part of our worship. We don't only sing and worship through our songs, we also worship God through our giving. And so as you give, you know, you are worshiping God and God blesses you as you give. Hallelujah. Let's receive the music team as they come and then we give our tithes and our offerings to the glory of God.
There is strength within the sorrow There is beauty in our tears And you made us in our morning With a love that casts out fear You are working in our waiting Sanctifying us and beyond our understanding, you're teaching us to trust your fans. Your fans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the Down 